can be found in Psalms 103. Psalms 103. That's where we're going to begin tonight. Don't have a very long message for you. Ken said since he cut down on the singing, he wanted me to cut down on the preaching. So, uh, I, I, uh, Somebody was asking me the other day, they were talking about long sermons. And I said, oh, my church loves me so much. I said, they put a clock <laughs> dead in front of me. So I'll know when I'm going too long. So, The word I wanted to find for you tonight out of the book of Webster's, and it's so appropriate listening to your uh, testimonies tonight, and I think you'll agree with me that no matter what I preach on tonight, you don't know what the subject is, but no matter what I preach on tonight or what verses out of the Bible I use tonight, it has been preached on before. Somewhere, sometime, somebody has preached this message. They've used the verses I'm going to use over the thousands of years since Christ was here. You're not going to preach a new message. You're not going to find a new verse. So that tells me that God's word's the same today as it was then. It's not changing. So, but it also tells me it's maybe we need to be reminded sometimes about things. Uh, and the night, I think we need to be reminded to be grateful. Let me define grateful for you according to the dictionary. It says a feeling or showing an appreciation of kindness to be thankful. Well, I heard what some of you had to say tonight in your testimonies, but I just want to ask in your heart, what are you grateful for? Who are you grateful for? I know many of you are grateful for godly parents or godly grandparents that raised you or somebody in your life that was a positive that you just really loved and, and they were very special to you. I want you to know tonight, if you had that, you do have a reason to be grateful because there's many in this world that do not have that. And that's partly where this message come from this week. God began to remind me in my heart of things I hadn't talked about in a long time till I had a conversation this week and it began to come back up in me and the feelings. And, and he, you know, I think sometimes we need to be reminded that uh, we have a lot to be grateful for tonight, church. We have a lot to be thankful for. You see, not only for being raised here in this area, which is a wonderful area, I would, if you gave me any other choice of any other place in the world to live, I, I, I'd pick Hector, Arkansas. I'd pick right where I was raised. And uh, if I had to do it all over again, that's where I'd want to be. Because like Sister Diane said, the people are, are just great. There's good people, good churches, just everything. But I think what causes that is because people love God. And we, we live in what they call the Bible Belt, and there's a reason for that. You know, when the people who settled here, our ancestors, and, and even the founding of this nation, it was based off Jesus Christ and his word. And that's why we're blessed today. There's no two ways about it. Now, yes, we have turned from that and we have drifted, but folks, I'm telling you, if we'll turn back, he'll bless us again. It is strictly up to us today. But... Do you always feel grateful? <laughs> I don't always feel grateful, and I should be ashamed of that. I, I, I'm working on it, but sometimes we just must be reminded. And I don't know if any of you have seen the movie uh, Blindside, but it is a true story about a young man out of the Memphis area that's adopted by, well, I mean, he's, he's already basically high, uh, high school age when he gets adopted by a wealthy family there in Memphis, and one of the scenes, <clears throat> they invite him in, after they invite him into their home, they give him uh, the bedroom and he walks in and he's just standing there. And uh, they said, uh, this is the first time you've ever had your own room? He said, it's the first time I've ever had a bed. And so many times, you know, we just assume everybody's raised the way we were raised. That's not the fact at all. I can remember when my kids were little, uh, they learned pretty at a young age about a Happy Meal. I think I've told you before, out in our shed, I think we have enough Happy Meal toys in a plastic bag 
that we could supply a third world country. Uh, they liked Happy Meals, and, and we liked to spoil them, so we went to McDonald's. And I can remember when I was on the highway, uh, there was a wreck one night or something. Wound up, I wound up with a, a child in my back seat, and I was taking them back to the house. And so I was going to run them through McDonald's, and I said, do you want a Happy Meal? And they had no idea what that was. Now, believe me, I'm not saying, because you don't eat at McDonald's, you're not. <laughs> you can be blessed to not eat at McDonald's. But what I'm saying is, for me and my kids, it just stopped me in my tracks. You know, I thought, you know, and then this week I had some conversations, and I began to go back into my mind. And, and I was talking to Cass earlier this week, and I told her, I said, you know, the line of work you're in, you're going to see a lot of things that bother you. Because, but I said, there's nothing, nothing until you have your own child. And then when you see these things, you know, I, I worked many fatalities and, and even some involving children. And I'm not saying I was cold hearted. It bothered me. But I would do my job and I would go on and, and I was okay. But after I had, after we had the girls, Folks, I couldn't do it, it totally changed me. I remember a 16-year-old girl in Morton, and I just sat in the funeral home and cried because, uh, you know, I had a new understanding. That's somebody's baby, and all, I can, all you can see in that situation is your own child. I don't care who you are, that's what you see. And when you begin to see and hear these problems and, and how some of these people are raised, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you a whole bunch of stories, but I'll tell you one that rocked me to my core not long after uh, Cassie was born. You know, I've, I've told you before, but we were very over precautious. You know, every time she had a bottle, we had it in the sink. We was bleaching it. We was washing it, you know. And then, and you know how it is. And the second one comes along, Molly, and she'd spit, spit her binky out at Walmart on the floor, and I'd pick it up, run it through my mouth, and right back in her mouth, it'd go. You know, that second one's a lot tougher because they get a lot of germs that first one don't get. But I can remember how, you know, we wouldn't let anything touch Cass. You know, it's like we put a border around her. And, and I walked into a house one day. We were arresting, we were arresting the father, and the mother was not treating us the way with respect. And... So the kids were seeing this, and as I looked around, both kids were in diapers, and they were crawling around on the floor where the dog had used the bathroom. There was nothing there for them. You know, it, it just stops you for a minute. But what I want to do tonight is I want to stop you in your everyday life and remind you how grateful you need to be that Jesus Christ loved you enough that he died on that cross that no matter how bad of an old sinner we were, because folks, we were. And I hope tonight you can say you were. I hope tonight you can say you've met Jesus Christ and all that's gone away. But I heard a story, and this is the last one I'll share with you before we get into Scripture, just to remind you how blessed you are and how grateful you are of a young child who, who cried, simply cried because an adult asked them how they were doing. Can you imagine being raised in a home where when an adult outside that home asked you how you are, that, that somebody showing you just that much attention would make you cry? I can tell you tonight, hug your children, hug your grandchildren. But you know what? If you get a chance, hug somebody else's. Because not everybody gets the love that you got, and not everybody gets the love that you extend to your children and your grandchildren. But tonight, I believe God is reminding us that we have a lot to be thankful for. And if you would, turn with me to Psalm 103. And when you find that, if you would tonight, stand to honor the reading of God's word. I'm going to read you five verses out of Psalms 103. I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, 
so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for one, another opportunity to come into this house, Lord, and worship you. And God, we come tonight with thankful hearts. And Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you'd forgive us of our sins and, and our shortcomings, Lord. Just be, just be patient with us and be gracious, Lord. And uh, we thank you for your mercy. And Lord, we just pray tonight that we would truly be thankful to you for everything you've done and everything you do for us. We pray as we, as we grow here tonight, as we leave, we'll leave with a grateful heart, and Lord, that, it will just, that we'll just shine you to this world. And Lord, I just pray tonight, as it comes to the preaching of your word, that you'd forgive me of my sins and wash me clean with your holy blood, Lord. And I just pray tonight that you'd speak through my mouth what you put in my heart. And God, speak it in a way that we understand it and sink it deep in our hearts tonight. And in Jesus' precious holy name, his children all prayed. I want to go back over this for just a second. Forget not all his benefits. Would you agree with me tonight? There's a lot of benefits to living for Jesus Christ. First of all, he forgiveth our sins. He healeth all diseases. And you say, Pastor, that's not true. I've got a cousin that died of cancer. Well, guess what? If they're a child of God, they're healed. Uh, if you're a child of God, no matter what you've got, you're either healed here or you're healed when you go home. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. In other words, when we were born, we were on the path to hell. There's nothing, and that was because of original sin. And folks, let's just be honest. We were born with a fleshy heart. We were born with a sinner's heart. And as we grew, we sinned. And then hopefully, and I pray that we all realize that one day we needed a Savior. And thanks to Jesus Christ dying on that cross, he saved us from destruction. He not only saved us, but look what he did next. He crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Did you know his mercies are new every day? And I, for one, am grateful for that. Amen. I hope you are too. Because sometimes we fall and we come short, you know. And uh, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it's just like he has opened my eyes to all the false doctrine that's being taught and preached today. And it just, it scares me to my core. But you know what? We're still here. Because of his tender mercies and his grace, he's given us another chance. And I want us to, you know, I want us to just live by the truth, live by his word. Folks, it's not hard to understand. Uh, it's, it's written for us. It's a love letter from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, it's what we need to know is everything between the covers, and it's clear. But one of the main things we need to remember is if you read this, when you stop being grateful, and I, and I had to chuckle because me and Jen listened to a sermon and the, the preacher even said this. He said, when you stop being grateful, you start feeling entitled. Would you say we live in a world where, where people think they're entitled? Amen. We live in a world where young people think they're entitled to have everything their grandparents have spent their life working for to have it immediately. Instant gratification. Folks, instant gratification uh, has nothing to do with love. Would you agree with that? Uh, because you see, God could have made us to love him. God created us. God could have made us where we had no choice at all. We, but, but I ask you this, is that truly love if you have no choice? Do you want your kids to, and your grandkids to come see you because they want to or because they have to? God's the same way. Why did, why did, when does he want us to talk to him? When we want to or because we're in trouble and we have to? He wants to talk to us every day. But he forgives our sins, he heals us, he has mercy, he renews us. Listen to this last one. He satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Anybody in here, huh, has father time been a little rough on your body? <laughs> Uncle Arthur visit anybody but the pastor. His middle name is Idas. Arthritis, if you know him. We, you get pains, don't you? And how many of you, let's just be honest, with the exception of about three in here, 
We're not spring chickens anymore. As Aunt B said when she was drinking the medicine on Andy Griffith, uh, she didn't realize she was drunk. She just thought the medicine was making her feel good, but she was really playing that piano where she was code two, as law enforcement would call it. But she, she said the doctor had told her she was no spring chicken. Well, folks, that's okay. Did you know it's okay that you have aches and pains? Because I've got great news for you. Tonight, if you are a child of God, did you know that's temporary? Did you know that there's coming a day when we'll have no aches, we'll have no pains. It tells us there'll be no tears from our eyes. Folks, we will be in heaven. There'll be no pain. There'll be no sorrow. We will be renewed like the eagle. You either believe that tonight or you don't. And I hope with everything in me you believe that. That we are headed home. That we are almost topping the hill to where we can see the lights of home. But you see, I want you to know tonight, we, li we do live in a fallen world. So when the storms rage, and I heard the mayor talking this morning about getting hit in the face, and when, so when the storms rage, or when life punches us in the face, because of our salvation, did you know we can be thankful for everything? Boy, that got a good response. I'm not sure y'all believe that. I know you believe it. Maybe you're just tired. Maybe, maybe you're like me. Maybe you need a nap. Because you are saved, church, you can be thankful for anything down here. Amen? What verse backs that up? Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Because we know that all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose, those who love God. Okay. Does that mean everything that happens to you is going to be good? Nope. Sure don't. But what it does, if you'll trust God, he'll get you through it, and whatever it is, you'll grow stronger, or it will increase your faith. And folks, that is all things work together for the good. But you see... I'm trying to think of the best illustration I could give you. Because in this world today, I believe with everything in me, there's a whole lot of people that think they're saved that are not saved. And a couple of weeks ago, we had a sermon here. And when we finished, I thought, God... Did I hinder you? Did I not put that as clearly as I needed to put it? Did, you know, because my prayer is to s totally surrender to him, to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me to you. And then I heard a sermon from a very elderly pastor that said everything that we said that night, which gave me strength, and, and he said... He believes in his lifetime the sinner's prayer has sent more people to hell than anything else that he knows of. And let me explain. Because there's people who say all you got to do is say the sinner's prayer and you're saved. If you remember, last week, we very clearly read in Scripture there's more to it than just saying the words. What's the one word they leave out all the time? Repent. You must repent. You've got to turn from your sin. And think about it. <coughs> and it just really <coughs> kind of slapped me back in the heart because it took me back. You know, I've shared my testimony to when I said the sinner's prayer. But that's all I did was I said it. I didn't live for God. And so I'm afraid too many people are hanging on to that that have said some words one time in their life and their life has never reflected God, they've never lived for God, they've never truly got away from their sin. You know, I think the example I used is if a man is in, in the act of adultery and he comes to the, uh, to the altar and he asks God to forgive him and he gets up and he's still in adultery and he stays in adultery, he didn't, mean, he didn't want to be forgiven. He, 
if you truly want to be forgiven, you'll turn from that sin. Uh, you know, it tells us that Jesus Christ is the rock. And if you fall on him, you'll be broken and you'll know you need a savior. But if he falls on you, you'll be crushed. And that's the judgment. But you see, when these storms are raging, what I want you to know tonight, I'm going to look around the room. There's not many of us tonight. I pray with everything in my heart that everybody in here is sincerely saved. And if you are tonight, let me tell you something. You can go home happy. Because regardless of what happens to you, regardless of what happens to your finances, regardless of what happens to your health, regardless of what happens to you personally, you're going to get to go to heaven. You're going to get to go home. Now, obviously, one thing that I think should really bother our heart is any of you love somebody that's lost? Amen. Any of you got neighbors that are lost? Any of you live in a town where everybody's saved? <laughs> no. So, since we are grateful to God for what he done for us, don't you feel like it is our, we owe it to God to share the good news as long as we're here? Amen. We do. But can you truly be thankful for everything? <laughs> can you do what God's word says? Listen to 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything, give thanks. I'm going to stop right there for just a minute. In everything, give thanks. Now, how many of you want the will of God for your life? Amen. Five of you, six maybe. I know all of you want it. You're just being quiet tonight. That's okay. There, there's not a, I, I look around this room, I guarantee you there's not anybody sitting in this room that does not want the will of God for your life. Is it okay with you if I share out of Scripture the will of God for your life? Let me finish the verse. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, I'll read it again. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, I am now charging you. As you know, the Bible is clear. If I do not share the truth of the word of God, your blood is on my hands when you pass. But if I share the truth and I do it in a loving way and I do it in... I do it from the word of God, then your blood is no longer on my hands. It's no more required at the time of judgment. And folks, I don't plan on having anybody's blood on my hands when I face judgment other than Jesus Christ's blood applied to my life. As long as I've got breath in my lungs, I'm going to preach out of this book. And I'm going to preach what God puts in my heart. So listen to what he's telling us. The will of God in Christ Jesus concerning Ken, concerning Dickie, concerning Frankie, concerning Joyce, concerning Corey, concerning Mom, concerning every one of you and me is that we give thanks in everything. It didn't say some things. It didn't say most things. It said everything. And if it's all right with you, I'll admit I fail in that area some. I'm not the first one to immediately yell, thank you, God. Just the other day, me and my wife was beginning to work cattles and I, cows, and I walked through, and there's a board hanging too low, and I brained myself. The first words out of my mouth was not, praise God, hallelujah. I took my whooping stick, and I whooped the side of the corral for a minute, and I said, that's stupid board. But then, you know what? <laughs> praise God, it didn't knock me out. And my wife is still praying that it knocked some sense into me. And praise God that I was there. Praise God I was healthy enough to do that. Amen? Thank God in everything. Folks, don't you see? <laughs> it's all in how we look at things. Life is an attitude. You can have a poor one or you can have a blessed one. Not all things that happen to us are going to be good initially, but if we'll hold on, God turns it to something good. You know, I, I told you this, but it, it, it fits so good. I love Adrian Rogers, and he's since passed and went on to be with the Lord. But he, he tells this story. He could not understand. He said, 
He said, me and his wife, he said, him and his wife were living for God. They had started a church. He said, everything, the church was blossoming. Everything was going great. And he said, they were serving God. They were praying together at night. He said, we were reading our Bible. He said, we were on fire for God. And he said, and then it come today, he said, he said, his wife come in and told him, he said, we're pregnant. So they went to the doctor, and then months rolled on, they found out it's going to be a little boy. And he said, we were so excited. He said, we were so, everything was great. And he said, then, he said, we had my little boy, and he said, and he died. And he said, I argued with God. He said, I shut down. He said, God, what more can I do for you? I'm preaching your word. He said, he said we're living for you. And he said, how can you let me down like this? And folks, that could be any of us, Amen. We could all have that conversation with God because we would not, initially we're not going to understand, are we? And he said, we began to, he said, I began to doubt. And he said, I began to argue. And he said, I never understood why God would do that to us when we were doing what we're supposed to for him. And he said, then one night, he said, about a year and a half, almost two years later, he said, I was preaching. And he said, a young lady come down to the front. And he said, she was so distraught. And said she was lost and said she said she didn't understand what God was. She said, I don't know where God is. I, she said, I need something in my life. But she said, I've lost a child and I don't understand. And he said, my wife heard it from the side. And he said, in just a minute, my wife was over talking with her. And he said, through the loss of our child, my wife was able to lead her to Christ. And he said, what we now know <laughs> is we didn't lose our son. Our son is in heaven with Jesus. And he said, we will get to see our son again. And we will get to be with our son for eternity. And this young lady, who would might have never met Jesus Christ had we not lost our son, now gets to go to heaven too. Folks, this is not our home. We're just passing through. This is temporary. So let's quit looking at the things down here like they're eternal because they're not. The only thing down here that is eternal is you. You and those other people that are living down here. We will be living eternally somewhere. No doubt about it. And the choices are A or B. A is heaven with Jesus and B is hell with Satan. And I don't want anybody going to B. But you see... We hang up on all these things, and oh, we can get our head down, and we can be kicked, and we can be down, but if you're saved tonight, I'm telling you, you have nothing but to be thankful, you, thankful for everything, and we got to be grateful, not just in the good times. Did you know, <laughs> oh, this is going to be tough, but as Adrian says, we're going to plow close to the corn, if that's all right with you. A child of God should not live in a pity party. Let me say that again, and let me be as direct as I can be. No child of God should walk around feeling sorry for themselves all the time. Period. I didn't expect any amens, but if you want to throw one in there, it'll be all right. Uh, it's okay to get down occasionally. Amen. Every now and then, we feel sorry for ourselves, don't we? But here's our goal. Anybody ever been to a birthday party where somebody opens a present slow? <laughs> My family's laughing because they have. Some, some people open them up quick. I'm quick. I like to see what I got and then get on with it because I know after you open it, you get to eat cake. But some people take their time and delicately cut the tape and unfold the paper because they're saving the paper for something. God bless you. I'm not saving it. But they slice it open, and, and 30 minutes later, they've opened their gifts. The reason I'm telling you that is because some parties take a long time, right? A pity party can't take a long time. I understand we're going to have them. But as we mature in Christ, as we grow in Christ, they need to be shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And does anybody need to know a child of God's having a pity party? No. Because if we, if we declare Christ in our life, which you have because you're here tonight, 
do we need to be different than the world? Have you ever heard of using God's name in vain? Most people think that's a cuss word when you say something after, the, after God, which it can be. But I believe the biggest act of using God's name in vain is to go to church and act like a Christian and go out in the world and act like the world. Because they know you go to church and then you're portraying God's name out there in a bad way. But you see, when we realize that we can be thankful in every situation, there's just a feeling of peace that comes over us. And how many love to just have a feeling of peace? Quiet, calm, peace. Even in the middle of a storm, did you know you can have peace? Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and listen to this, and be ye thankful. If you want peace in your life, be thankful. Be grateful to God. Don't worry. You know, I'm not going to play you the song that Bobby McFerrin sings. I believe that's his name. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> what I'm going to tell you is don't worry, praise God. Trust that he will carry you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him. Why? For he careth for you. I want to close with this. This, above all, is why you can be grateful tonight if you know God is your Father. Is God in ultimate control of everything? Is God omnipresent, which means he's everywhere? Okay. Did God create this world? Do you truly believe tonight that Jesus Christ walked across the water? Do you truly believe tonight that Jesus Christ, when they woke him up from that ship, he walked up on that bow of that ship and he told the wind and the waves to be still and they stopped? I'm setting you up, church. I hope you realize that. You believe that, right? I do. How many of you believe that as Pharaoh's army came after the children of God that the Red Sea parted? Oh, I've heard scientists try to explain about the east wind. Folks, <laughs> if God says it, you don't need a wind. If God says part waters and land be dried, guess what? Water's going to part and land's going to be dried. Do you believe? However, there's different estimates of, of how many people it was, but at least a million. Do you believe they crossed that on dry land? And do you believe when the enemy tried to come after them that the water swallowed them up. <laughs> Do you believe that Jesus Christ came to earth over 2,000 years ago and walked as a man on this earth, lived a sinless life, both man and God, to pay a ransom that none of us could pay? Do you believe that they crucified him on a cross, that they drove nails through his hands and through his feet, and that the life in his body left his human body that day? Do you believe that they took him down off that cross and laid him in a tomb, and that God raised him up out of that tomb, his father? Now, you've said you believe a lot of stuff tonight. You know the only reason Jesus Christ done that was because of you. If it had been just you, he'd have done it. Do you believe tonight that Jesus loves you? So you've told me that you believe God is everywhere. You believe God created everything. You believe God commands the wind and the waves and everything down here. You've told me that you believe God loved you so much that he came down here in the form of a man and was beaten, was spit on, had his flesh ripped with razor blades, was beat mercifully, and he was nailed to a cross. And you believe that he, God, creator of all, you told me just now that you believed he submitted himself to death, that he became so humble that he let death 
take the life of the Son of God on a cross. And you told me that you believed they placed him in a grave, in a tomb, and that you told me you believed with everything in your heart that God restored the life into Jesus and raised him up, and he is now in heaven with God. Amen? Then you tell me one thing you have to fear or you have to worry about. Anybody. Nothing. He loves you and he's in control. So have peace in your hearts and trust him and know that it's going to be all right. If you would, stand with me all over this building. I'm just going to ask you to pray with me tonight. I will never, ever close a service without asking. If you drew your last breath tonight, are you certain that you would be in heaven after that breath? Your last breath on earth, are you certain the next breath will be in heaven with Jesus? If you're not, friend, do not leave this building tonight. I pray you don't without making things right with God. Is there anything tonight that you need? If you need to pray about anything, I believe with everything in my heart that you as the children of God and we as the church are under attack. I believe the enemy is forming something like we've never seen here before, but I've got great news for you. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be afraid. Just trust God and let his peace rule in your heart and you'll have the opportunity, I believe, that we will in our lifetime to shine brighter than anybody's shown in a long, long time in history because this world's getting darker, but I believe Jesus wants to shine brighter. And you are the hands and the feet of God. You are the mouth for God. You show his love and light to this world. If you need anything tonight, we'll pray with you. We'll believe with you. You've said tonight you believe an awful lot. I do too. And I know that God's going to get us through.